Welcome to another episode of Kitty's Cantina, Eating in Style on the Road. Thanks for tuning in. Before we get started, I want to let you know that I'm working on some big changes on the Kenny's Cantina website. One addition will be a travel log with pictures, video, and some commentary on some of the sites I'm seeing in my travels. So stay tuned for that. I hope you're finding my website, www.ibcproductions.com slash K-U-R-Y, helpful in your RV kitchen, and I hope it's tantalizing your taste buds with the different dishes, and with the upcoming travel log, I hope it spurs you to get out and explore. There's so much to see. So I'm still enjoying the Pacific Northwest. The other day I took a ferry into Seattle. Seattle is a great town to explore, and my favorite place there is Pike's Place Market. It's a neat place to visit, and whenever I'm in the area, I always try to make a trip there. The market's a great place to pick up fresh flowers to spruce up your RV. If you need fresh produce, you can find a large variety at Pike Place. And I think the main draw of the market is the fresh seafood. Salmon, crab, oysters, you name it, you can find it among the various fishmongers in Pike Place. You can also find a hodgepodge of other crafts and items there. So. If you're in the area, be sure and swing by Pike Place Market. So Kenny's Breakfast Pie is a tasty breakfast. It's simple to make. And like I said, you can quickly reheat this for a quick breakfast before sightseeing, or even if you're on a travel day. So you can start the day with a, a full stomach. You can also get very creative with this dish by switching out various breakfast meats. So if you don't have ham, which I'm using, if you have bacon and sausage, you can use that too. So just a reminder, you can find this recipe along with the recipes from my other shows on my website, ibcproductions.com slash curry. The prep time for this dish is about 15 minutes. Cooking time, 40 minutes in the oven. Servings, four to six, depending on, on the, slice, the size of the slices that you cut the pie up. Leftovers, you can store in the refrigerator for a week and you can store this in the freezer for up to six months. So the ingredients, we need a cup of chopped ham, a cup of shredded hash browns, a half cup of chopped onions, a half cup of chopped green peppers, one cup of shredded cheddar cheese, one cup of shredded smoked gouda cheese, a deep dish pie crust, a cup of heavy cream, tablespoon of minced garlic, teaspoon of black pepper, four large eggs, and two tablespoons of butter. So the first thing that you want to do on the prep of this dish is to preheat your oven to 425 degrees. Let me get this going, get it started. Shut the door and let that preheat. Now one of the things, here's a tip for you. I use a thermometer inside my oven gives me a much more accurate reading than just using the settings on the dial that say 350, 400. In RVs, those are off much of the time. So I find that internal thermometer really helps to do it. And the other problem that you can run into because of that temperature is on the preheating, what I do is I turn the oven all the way up and then I back down to the temperature that I'm looking for. And I've just found that's easier to get that 425 or 350 or whatever it is that you're cooking under to get that temperature. It's a lot easier to back down to it than it is to work up to it. So just a couple little tips there for cooking in the oven. So the first step here is I'm gonna take a cookie sheet and I'm gonna cover it with aluminum foil and with that, let me place it around the seat. So when I cook the pie in the oven, what, I'm going to set it on the cookie sheet, and this will catch any spillage that comes out of it. That way you don't have to clean your oven after you've had any kind of spillage, because that's never a fun task. And at the end, you just roll up the aluminum foil and throw it away. So the next step, I'm gonna start cutting the veggies 
and the ham and get everything prepared as that oven preheats. So I'm going to start off and chop my onions. And let me get in. I'm dicing these into about quarter inches. And then I'm going to scoot that to the side. Next, I'm going to chop the green pepper in a cup. This is going to be about a half a green pepper. So let me slice that down. I'm going to pull the stem and seeds out of one side. And then slice that across. And then chop that up. Okay, we're going to put that aside. In the shredded hash brown potatoes, you can use frozen, you could use fresh, you can even grate your own. But I'm gonna, I'm using the fresh uh, that you find in the supermarket. I'm gonna put a cup of that, measure it out, set that out in my cut, cutting board. The next step is the ham. Buy a nice, to buy a nice ham steak, and I'm gonna cut off some of that and start dicing that in about 3 8 inch size. I also like to cut off any excess fat. Sometimes the ham has a rim of fat around it. I'll cut off that and measure that out. There's a cup. And I'm going to put that aside. I'll move my knife, get out my shredder. And I'm going to start with my smoked Gouda. And I use pretty big, uh, the large side of the grater, not the fine. I just find that that melts a little better together. And I'm going to start shredding that. Okay. Let me pull that out of my, my grater. And I like using smoked Gouda. It gives the dish a much richer flavor uh, than if you were to use Swiss and all. You could use Swiss if that's all you had. But like I said, I think the smoked Gouda really adds uh, an interesting flavor to the breakfast pie. Now I'm going to take my cheddar and do the same thing. Break that down. Bring out the behind the the grater, let me set the grater down. And let me put a the shredded cheddar in a cup. Okay, and we've got that. So all those ingredients are prepped and ready to go. Now it's time to crack some eggs. So I've got a uh, mixing bowl and a whisk and I'm gonna put the four eggs, crack them, and dump them in there. Okay, and then I'm going to take my cup and measure out a, a cup of heavy cream and pour that into it. And then I'm going to add the black pepper to this mixture. That, measure that. All right, then I'm going to take my whisk and whisk that up real well. Eat up those eggs good. It's, it's going to have a nice consistency, a little yellowy consistency. Okay. Let's set, set that aside, and we'll come back to that in a minute. I'll get a spatula out for this. I'm going to start by melting the butter in a skillet. Let me start the oven. I mean the stove. Okay. I'm going to get that butter melting. And once that butter's melted, I'm going to kind of swirl it around. And then I'm going to take my ham and veggies and the potatoes, and I'm just going to slide those into the skillet. And I have the, the pan on high, and I'm going to mix that up so that butter kind of coats everything. And what we're going to do is we're going to pan fry this for about five minutes. And the reason I'm doing that 
is this is helping to blend all those flavors of the onions and veggies in the ham together. Okay, let me go ahead and add my minced garlic into this now that it's starting to heat up. Get that. And mix that in. The garlic's going to add a little bit more flavor to this mixture. Just let it simmer for five minutes and we'll come back to it. Okay, it's been five minutes. I'm going to take that off the heat. And I'm going to take my cookie sheet and place my pie shell on top of it. And then what I'm going to do is take my ham and veggie mixture, my spatula, and I'm going to put a layer across the bottom of the pie. Smooth that out. And then I'm going to take my gouda and cheddar and put a layer of that on top of the pie and an even coat around. And now I'm going to take the remaining mixture of the ham and veggies and spread that out. Okay. Set that aside. And then I'm going to take the remaining cheese and spread that across the top. So now we have the pie shell, and then we've layered the ham and veggies, cheese, ham and veggies, and cheese. So let's take our egg mixture. Let's give it a good stir again, mix it up since it's been sitting. And I'm going to slowly add this around into the top of the pie filling up the pie crust. Let me get all that out of there. All right. My oven, let me check my heat. Okay, it's good. I'm at 425. And now I'm going to take the cookie sheet and the breakfast pie. Be careful not to uh, keep it level as you're putting it in here. And I'm going to slide it in that. So it's in the oven. Close the door. So let's let that set for 10 minutes, and then we'll check on it. Okay, so we've been 10 minutes. Now what I like to do is rotate the pie. Let me get my oven mitt here. And I'm going to rotate the pie 180 degrees. And the reason I do this, RV ovens are notorious for unevenness cooking. So by rotating the, the pie, it's, it's going to make it a little more even. And also, if your RV is not quite level, by rotating it after 10 minutes, it'll help on any spillover that you have. So now that I've rotated this, I'm going to let that cook for 20 minutes. So hang tight and let's give it some time to cook. Okay, it's been 20 minutes. Let me take a look at it. All right, it's starting to brown on top. And now I'm going to rotate it one more time for the last 10 minutes. And this will get help to get the the top of it much more even uh, the coloring even across so if there again any piece of the oven this will take care of so I've got that rotated and we're going to let that pie cook for another 10 minutes so hang tight all right it's been 10 minutes let me get my oven mitt and move my frying pan out of the way off the top of the stove. I'm going to pull out the cookie sheet, set it up on top of my stove, and let's take a look at it. So the cheese on top is a nice tan color. The crust has a nice brown to it. It's looking good. You can take a toothpick and 
just kind of give it a field test like you would a cake to make sure that it's firm inside and when you pull it out that there's no liquid on that toothpick. And we're going to let this set and cool down for 15 minutes before we cut into it. So let's let it cool and we'll come back and try some breakfast pie. All right, the pie is a little cooler. It's still warm, but now it's cool enough. Let me get my mitt. Let me move that over to my cutting board. And I'm going to cut the pie. I'm going to just cut a piece. Let me get a little plate to set this on. Let me get that out and let's put it on top. All right, boy, you can smell the aroma, that smokiness out of this. And one of the things back with the veggies, you know, we just, in the ham, we just kind of cooked it up right away, and then it cooks the rest of the way, and they get tender inside this. So let me get a fork and give this a bite. Mmm. Mmm. It's still a little warm. But you get this rich flavor between the, the sautéed vegetables, the ham, the smoked gouda. It's this really rich flavor. And I like the potatoes in there, those hash browns in there. And the flavors have just really blended together. So, cool. That's going to that's gonna do me well for the rest of the day while I'm out sightseeing. So, cool. So, some tips. One thing I've found is I use large eggs for this, not jumbo eggs. A lot of times I buy the jumbo eggs, but the problem with the jumbo eggs, it actually creates too much egg mis mixture and it will run over. So just use the large eggs. And as I mentioned before, RV ovens can be difficult. So use a internal oven thermometer to try to get an accurate temperature uh, the internal temperature of, of the oven. And along the same lines, preheat your oven at the highest setting and then back to temperature. So for this dish, that rotating the breakfast pie helps with unevenness that you can find in, in the RV ovens. And if you're not level, it'll flip over. If I do this approach and not just for the, this pie, but I'm cooking anything in the oven, I rotate it several times. Now you can substitute bacon and sausage for the ham dish, but be sure and pre-cook your bacon and your sauce till it's done before you uh, put it in the pie. That way it won't be undercooked in your pie. And I have used both bacon and sausage and eggs. It makes for a great dish. On the veggies, you can also get creative on this. You can add mushrooms or zucchini or uh, spinach. You can do all sorts of things. So whatever you have in around or whatever your your favorite flavors are, you can put those in here. So get creative with this dish. So I hope you enjoy your breakfast pie. Remember, you can find this recipe and all my others on my website, abcproductions.com slash curry, under the recipe tab. Now let's move on to Kenny's Q&A time. My last episodes were on sh a shrimp boil and Kenny's cocktail sauce. And these, these two episodes, they go together, and they generated several questions. I appreciate your comments and questions. The Q&A portion of this show has become quite popular. And I love the research and thought process that goes into my answers to your questions. I'm all about sharing and exploring new ideas. And your questions get me hitting the books and getting my creative, ju creative juices going. So thanks for the questions and comments. So let's get to the mail. Our first question comes from Janet in Arizona. She writes, why do most shrimp boil recipes call for shell on shrimp? Most of it is shrimp added in the last three to five minutes, so it doesn't seem like the shells can impart much flavor, 
but I may be wrong. Just curious. Looking forward to hearing all of your answers. Janet, thanks for the question. Leaving the shells on, even for a short time, does add a more toasty and briny flavor to the shrimp. It also helps to keep the shrimp from overcooking. It's kind of a protective layer. And another added benefit is that you cut down on the work of pre-shelling all your shrimp. You let, let your guests do the shelling for you. So this is a good question. Thanks, Janet. Next we go to Sam from Mississippi. Sam states, I've always used liquid Zetaran's crab boil in my shrimp, and I put it in before the water boils. Recently, I read somewhere that people boil their shrimp, crab, crawfish, and just water without the liquid crab boiling, then pour the crab boil in when they turn the burner off and let them soak. I've never eaten in this way. Do you think this will change the taste? I noticed that you added your seasoning after the cooking draining process. This is an interesting question, Sam. There are liquid, powdered, and pouch crab shrimp boil seasonings, and all work and are good. I'm with you on adding seasoning during the cooking process. The spice I added after draining the water from the boil is to add another layer of flavor, but I do put the shrimp seasoning in prior to the boiling process. So adding liquid shrimp boil after cooking just in the soaking process that would reduce the level of spice flavoring of the boil. So, like I said, I'm with you, Sam. Uh, I like the flavoring, so I would add it prior to the boil. So, good question. Thanks. Frank from Texas asks, I do a lot of shrimp boils down here from time to time. In Texas, I put in button mushrooms. They soak up the flavor like a sponge. Have, a, have you ever tried mushrooms in your boil? Well, Frank, I do have friends that add button mushrooms to the boils. I haven't tasted it, but I plan on trying it on the, my next boil. Spice, spicy mushrooms have to be good. So thanks for the input and the tip, Frank, and we'll see how that goes. Sam from Kentucky has an interesting comment in, in, to make. Uh, he says, love your podcast. We have a family get-togethers a lot, and shrimp boils are a big part. On our last get-together, my cousin said that when he boils, he adds whole artichokes to the boil. He says that they're good and from the spices of the boil. What do you take on his suggestion? Well, I'm glad you're enjoying the podcast, Sam. This is an interesting take on the boil. I've grilled artichokes, and they come out great. It stands to reason that the artichokes would absorb the flavor of the boil. I'm going to give this a try as well in the next boil. So next time I'm, I make it, I'm going to add the mushroom and the artichoke and see how it goes. So thanks for the idea, Sam. The next set of questions deal with Kenny's cocktail sauce. Based on the questions from y'all, I did some experience. I was having crab takes for dinner, so I whipped up some cocktail sauce based on your questions. Barbara from New England says, I'm having a dinner party and would like your opinion on cocktail sauce. I'll be adding a twist to this, but I'm not sure it'll work out well. Need your help. I'd like to use it as a dipping sauce and maybe add some mayonnaise and serve it with fried mushrooms or calamari. By adding the mayonnaise, do you think it'll relax the sauce or should I just leave it alone? Barbara, I like this question. It gives me a chance to play with the cocktail sauce. So I made up a, a batch of the cocktail sauce and then added some mayonnaise to it. It does make the sauce creamier, but much of the flavor is lost. I'd use the original recipe and just dunk the fried mushrooms and calamari into the sauce. Your, your guests will get a lot more flavor in every bite. Thanks for the question, Barbara. Next, we go to Fran from Arkansas. My neighbor and I made up your cocktail sauce and fell in love with it. Thanks for making it, Fran. Excellent sauce. But she told me that you could enhance it even further if you add dill pickle juice to it. She had tried it instead of your lemon juice and stated it had a nice tang flavor instead of using lemon juice. She went on to say that it gave a fresh bite from the dill. Have you ever heard 
or tried this substitute before. Fran, I decided to give you a pickle juice a try. It does change the flavor of the cocktail sauce. The lemon, I feel, is a fresher taste than the pickle juice, which is more puckery, if that's a word. The lemon better complements the sweetness found in shrimp. It's an interesting experiment. Thanks for your suggestion, Fran. Gail from Alaska asks, Kenny, what are your thoughts on serving your Kenny's cocktail sauce with a salmon dish? Do you think it works? So, Gail, in Alaska, you get a lot of great salmon and other seafood. I've thought long and hard about this question. Salmon has a very different flavor than other milder fish. My thoughts are that the sweetness in the cocktail sauce would clash with the more savory and smokiness of the salmon. But I would try it on fried halibut, which is another Alaskan seafood mainstay. Uh, in fish and chips and things like that. So thanks, Gail, for your question. All this experimentation with my cocktail sales got me thinking. So I poured some of it on top of cream cheese and spread it on a cracker. It tasted great. So next time you make up a batch, give it a try with any leftovers you may have. It's, it's a neat alternative, and it tastes good. I want to thank all my viewers and fans who took the time to cook with me and have taken a busy day to drop me a note with a question or a comment. Over 2,000 of y'all have watched all of my episodes, so thank you. You enjoying the show is what it's all about, and I appreciate your viewing. I'm excited about my next show. I'll be preparing gumbo. This is a great, tasty dish that provides lots of leftovers which only get better when it sits. I will also be using a new product thanks to a new sponsor that will help not only in the preparation of the gumbo, but also in saving you pantry space in your RV. So stay tuned for the next Kenny's Cantina Eating in Style on the Road. Thanks for watching, and don't forget previous shows and recipes can be found on my website and be watching for the new travel log join me on my explorations. You can also find Kenny's Cantina on Facebook at facebook.com slash Kenny's Cantina. I'll be posting additional pics of what I'm cooking and pics of what I'm doing in my travels. So like my page to stay up to date between podcasts. You can also leave me comments on that page. You can also follow me on Instagram at Kenny's Cantina and on Twitter at K Cantina. Thanks for following me and drop me a note on my social media accounts. Kenny's Cantina wouldn't be possible without the help of my sponsors, IBC Productions and the Roadhog Media Network. So a big thanks to them. See y'all on the road.